Welcome to the Creative Homeschool Podcast. In this podcast, I'm coming at you to deliver you a weekly dash of creativity to make your homeschool exciting for your kids, but for you too. We're going to explore all of the different ways to creatively homeschool. Games, field trips, unit studies, writing activities, kid businesses, art, and more. I'm your host, Julie Soule, longtime homeschool mom, shenanigan enthusiast, espresso drinker, and founder and co-owner of Soul Spark Let's Art. I've helped thousands add creativity and joy to their homeschool, and I'm ready to help you too. Ready to get started? Let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Creative Homeschool Podcast. Today, I was going to record an episode on something with notes like I usually do, but yesterday a few things made me realize that there's something that I want to talk about even more, and that's about homeschool friendship. My girls are nine and almost 12. And so this year, my oldest went into middle school and not one, but three of her friends happened to be enrolled into public school. Now, It's a topic for another day as far as why homeschool parents feel like middle school is going to be harder, why so many of them suddenly decide to enroll their kids because they feel like they can't do it. We'll definitely dive into that on another day. But one of the biggest benefits and also a little bit of one of the curses of homeschooling is that we often become friends with our friends' moms and dads or grandparents or caregivers also. And so when a child goes to public school, they lose a friend, and we do too. And it's really hard. Now, I know that a lot of you out there might think that you can just keep in touch. And the truth is, it doesn't happen very often, does it? We always have the best of intentions in keeping in touch. But for my oldest, who has a friend on the other side of the city, there isn't much time after school to get together. And on the weekends, they have their own things going on. So a situation where we thought that maybe they'd be able to see each other has not really happened. They've seen each other a couple of times briefly, maybe for Halloween trick-or-treating, and that's it. And it's hard. It is absolutely hard on my kids and a bit on me also. Because as we continue to meet our friends, as we go to these co-ops, these partnerships, these playdates, these classes, we're hoping that our kids make friends, but we also need those friends for us too. And it's really hard because it's almost like dating again. Is this child that you meet a good match for your kids? Are they compatible? I have an introvert child who just loves kids who will talk her ear off, you know, and then we have the joy or the curse of having to refriend people nonstop on our own. And this is what keeps a lot of us back, isn't it? It keeps a lot of us back from going to these park days because we're not just dropping our kids off to play with friends. We have to be social too. And It's hard as an introvert to take ourselves out of our house and to go somewhere where we're not going to know anyone. And we feel like, at least for me, I went to public school my whole life, like we're doing that all over again. But as many of us hear, when one door closes, another one opens. And although several friendships have fallen away, the opportunity is then there for new ones. And the truth is, through a little bit of elbow grease, maybe a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears, we've created a group that is just so unique. And our friends are closer and better. And to be able to have an impromptu play date on a day where it was literally 60 in Michigan in February and it was sunshine, and they're all running around, and I don't even have a clue what they're doing in the forest, in the field. Role-playing, playing games was just literally the best thing in the world. So what do we do when our friends, we don't see them anymore, and our friendship changes? As homeschoolers, this is really tricky because, like again, this is a kid 
and an adult thing. And if you have a kid in public school, your kids know these friends. You might not know the parents very well unless you're setting up play dates. And if you set up a play date, you might not even have an opportunity to really sit down and talk to that parent. And you also have no idea what that parent is like ahead of time, unlike a homeschool situation where you usually meet both at the same time. But how do you go ahead and find those people? How do you find those people who are going to light you up and going to stick with you on this homeschool journey? Now, everybody has a different feeling about who they're looking for. So I'm going to share mine, but I want you to keep note that this isn't what everyone is looking for. And I want you to go and find the friends, the group, the situations that make you feel comfortable. So I started a homeschool group, and one of our requirements is that we want people who are there to homeschool for the long term. Now, does that mean that someone testing out homeschooling is not a beautiful person? No. In fact, that could be you on the other end of this microphone. But for our group, one of the things that continues to be really hard on not only my kids, but the kids in our group, is when they feel like they've gotten really close with kids and then they don't see them anymore, especially as they're getting a little bit older. So we have lots of groups that are designed for everyone, but for our specific little tiny corner and neck of the woods, it's for those who are planning on homeschooling for middle and high school also. And of course things happen, but it definitely does help to ease everyone's mind that as their kids are making these friendships, that they're going to be there for the long term. The other is people who show up. I know, again, we all have the best of intentions, but having introverted kids, it's really hard when people don't actually show up for any of the meetups because my child won't remember who on earth this child is that they saw two and a half months ago. So we have a very loose requirement to come as often as you can, or at least to communicate something's going on and you can't, which has made the friendships between myself and the other parents and our kids even tighter. The third rule that we have for our group is really important to me, and that's a come as you are We have a, I don't care what you believe or don't believe so long as you don't care what I believe or don't believe philosophy. Probably not saying it quite in the way that it's meant to be said, but basically it means if you are atheist, Christian, pagan, or anything in between, just be a good person and be welcome. And this mix has literally produced probably one of the best friendship groups that I have ever had the honor of being a part of. And it all started when my kids lost three of their friends when they went away to public school because it gave me that push to go and find a different, a stronger friend group and being able to sit outside and watch my kids run around at the park and having an entire hour where I get to talk with literally the best humans I have had the pleasure of meeting, has really been everything. So if you're still looking for your group, keep trying, keep working. I kept putting the notifications out there on Facebook, trying other different things. Facebook communities for your state are a really good idea. Anyone live in these areas? But again, I used to feel bad. I used to have everyone come in and join and be disappointed. But now, having expectations about what I'm looking for in a friend group has really just helped. Because again, we're making friends for our kids, but we're also making friends for us. And you know, making friends is really kind of hard. So if you're in Southwest Michigan, look me up because I would love to have you aboard. Okay, everyone, till next time.